Ah, Windows 7. Some would call this the best operating system ever made, even better than the legendary Windows XP. In 2007, the reception to Windows Vista was mixed to say the least. Driver compatibility was bad and early adopters got very disappointed after finding out that Vista ran so poorly on their PCs. Fast forward to 2009 and Microsoft wanted to make it right with Windows 7. The pressure was immense and surprisingly, the company listened to the feedback. The OS still kept its sleek aero desktop interface from Vista with a few refinements. Hardware manufacturers also took their time to release better drivers, which resulted in better compatibility. A lot of bloatware was also removed, such as the infamous bubble screensaver. But above all else, Windows 7 also ran a lot, lot smoother, mostly thanks to computers becoming more powerful with things like two and four gigs of RAM becoming the norm and the rise of multi-core processors. But it's no longer 2009, Windows no longer comes with six different versions, and it no longer gives your computer a performance index rating. So anyway, let's go on a little nostalgia trip and try using Windows 7 today in 2023. And no, I won't be using a virtual machine. I won't be installing it on a PC with modern tech. Instead, I wanted to get the real experience. So I asked around and actually a colleague of ours was kind enough to donate us this HP laptop. It's really heavy from 2008. Uh, running three gigs of DDR2 RAM and a dual core mobile processor. And yeah, this thing is absolutely humongous. The hinge is kind of busted. It only works while plugged in, but it's the right way to try Windows 7. Let's start with the login screen. The first thing that hits my nostalgia is this profile icon. And there, there are actually a lot more of them. And we'll probably pop a image on the screen now just to sort of also hit your nostalgia as well. Now, here we are at the desktop, and I gotta say, it feels extremely familiar. This desktop design was really ahead of its time. When we look back from where it originated from with Windows Vista, and when we compare this to Windows 11, the idea is still the same, really. You get your start menu on the left, your tray icons on the right. The start menu was just so simple, and Microsoft tried to reinvent it so many times and then just went back to this. Though I will say, that Windows 11 is nice and you can finally create like app folders and things like that and pin apps you actually use. That was actually a good change. The Arrow theme was just so cool, transparent glass and everything. I was so jealous of Arrow while using Windows XP and I was even installing themes to sort of fake it. Let me know in the comments if you did that as well. Let's go to my computer properties. Here's the awesome, awesome performance index. As you can see, we're getting a whopping 4.2. Looking back, I kind of get what Microsoft was doing here. Having a system that tells you how well your computer would perform, which then developers could use to provide system requirements. I can kind of see this system working, potentially even making a comeback in the future. Who knows? One thing that still made its way from Vista was the gadgets. And I remember everyone had these on their desktop, at least at the early stages. You can have a little calendar or some kind of RSS feed, a weather gadget. It's kind of strange to call them gadgets. Android kind of broke me. I, all, I, all I can think about is widgets now. Let's check out the personalization options. Once again, Arrow just gives me so much nostalgia. I would make my own custom themes. I remember having a green one, a red one with custom wallpapers and things like that. It was so cool because you could use multiple wallpapers so they would change over time. It was just awesome. Changing windows colors, enable transparency. It seems so trivial now, but at the time, I thought this was amazing. Now, if you clicked on this video, you may be wondering if it's possible to go online with Windows 7. Well, let's see. Is this computer going to explode? I don't know. Well, actually, in preparation for this video, I did install Firefox using the good old Internet Explorer, which surprisingly still kind of works. And yeah, you can still browse internet without tr any trouble. So let's try going to the Surfshark website. And as you can see, everything works fine. Obviously things are a bit slower on this machine, but the important thing is that it works. Now let's do the real test. Let's go to YouTube. Takes a minute or two. Let's see how this baby runs. It's like, whoa, this is much better now because get this, you can now choose it actually works. 
By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the Surfshark Academy channel if you haven't already. Quite honestly, after using this on and off for a week, and yeah, I did use this for a little bit, I have to say that I could still comfortably stay on Windows 7. But obviously we have to talk about security. In January of 2023, Microsoft finally ended the extended support of security updates for both Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. That means that if there's a day one malware or day one ransomware of any kind and you're caught in the open without any kind of antivirus, well, let's just say you'll have a bad day. There's a reason why modern OSs like Windows 10 and Windows 11 are being updated all the time, and that's because of security vulnerabilities that happen all the time. The minute those security updates stop rolling, you're in deep trouble. And that's why here on this channel, I preach about keeping your software up to date. Now, I should point out that yes, you can install a third-party antivirus and make Windows 7 more secure. However, again, by having those security holes that are not patched by Microsoft will still leave you with a huge risk. So what are your options then? Well, believe it or not, you can actually upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 11 or 10 for free. You will have some limitations like being stuck with a watermark on your desktop or not being able to change your wallpaper or theme, but that is a very small price to pay for having a secure system. You could also use this as an opportunity to try Linux. Now, I know, I know that can be very daunting, especially with the terminal boogeyman looking at you at every step. But quite frankly, Linux is one of the most secure systems that you can use today. And since you are upgrading from Windows 7, you're probably running an older PC such as this one, which again is a great pairing for Linux since its system requirements are so much lower than Windows 10 or Windows 11. There's also a ton of Linux flavors to choose from, but I would say if you're coming from Windows 7, starting with something like Linux Mint would be a great option. Anyway, that'll be all for this little nostalgia trip of Windows 7. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out more of our videos right over here and I'll see you in the next time. Take care.